Good morning, it's Sandra here from Creating Spain and today I want to introduce you to a couple of my snowflake designs. So I've got two of them cut out. One is half off and half on a piece of, well, what is just under uh, A6 card. And this is a photo card. This is normal paper, card, whatever. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what type that one is. Now I have my white tile here so you can see the colours that I'm using and I've actually got round to putting some felt on the back so it moves along nicely. Thank you to Alison for insisting that I get that done while she was here. And I am going to start with some cool colours I think for this particular one. So I'm going to go for some grey flannel. Uh, Teal zeal and maybe a hint of northern pine for the first one. An unusual colour combination for me. Got my glycerin, so I'm going to put some glycerin in the centre there and my blending tools. And I'm just going to get a piece of kitchen roll so that I can check what colour I've got on my blender. Whoops, got plenty of green on here already by the looks of it. Um, I hadn't actually washed this one out, so get rid of most of that. I don't mind if there's a bit there. So I'm going to start off with the grey flannel. Get my glycerin. Now photographic paper doesn't have quite the same properties when you're colouring it as normal paper or card, so just be aware of that if you're using it. And I'm going to start by very gently going around the edges. You were squeaking. I'm going to use a pouncing motion on this bit because otherwise I will end up breaking my snowflake. I think that will do for that one for the moment. Okay, so this one I'm going to go in with more traditional bluey colours. And I think that's the colour range I'm going to go for. For these. So I've got Bahama Blue, which I may or may not use. Paris Dusk. Grape Jelly. Lulu Lavender and Summer Sky. Summer Sky I know is very, very pale, so I may not find much of a use for this one. Oh, I do like that. Now, that does tend to be rather my colour choice rather than the other one, but, you know, I'll give it a shot and see what happens. I'm going to go back onto this one and do the same sort of thing around the edge if I can. I'm not sure if it will work, but we'll see. So, back to the northern pine. Or maybe I ought to go in for the Paris Dusk, I'm not sure. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I think I'll go in with Paris Dusk and see what that does. There's still green left on here, so get rid of some of that. But go in with Paris Dusk or Nautical Blue. Oh, Paris Dusk, I think. What's the Nautical Blue like? Yeah, okay. Maybe I'll just do a mix of the two. I can't decide. I'll do a mix of the two. There we are. And this is going to create sort of like a smoke effect almost. Which is quite fun. But I can only continue that down to about there. As I can't go over that broken up snowflake too well. There we are. Okay, I think that really enhances that one as well. Okay. 
I decided with this one to cut out a silver glitter card snowflake and to inset it. So I need to put some glue on the back of this. Or actually, one of the easier things to do is to put the glue into the actual holes because I think that is probably going to be a bit easier than doing it the other way around. But these are just absolutely beautiful. Oh, the colours! So nice! Right. Ooh. I think of these gorgeous little pots. How sweet is that? I'm going to take too many out of here. I know what happen if you tip it, you'll end up with them absolutely everywhere. I'm going to do them one colour at a time, otherwise I'll get the colours all mixed up in my containers. I need to stop there. <laughs> I need to get the sentiment done before I do any more. But I think that's going to look really, really pretty. I actually think that just putting some of these paler stars on here might just be all I need to make it a very simple, very classic sort of card. I'm going to go for these white pearlescent ones because I think those will look absolutely gorgeous. So oops. I may end up making another colour selection as well but I'm not sure about it. We'll see. So And I'm thinking that I'll probably put the sentiment at the top, but I might just put it down the bottom. I'm not sure yet. For the sentiment for this card, I've decided to do something very slightly different. I have stamped out a sentiment. As you can see, it's got a little gap on the S where it didn't stamp properly, but I really don't mind that. Now, this is rather strange, but this is nail gel. This is a builder gel. Um, it wasn't an expensive one. It's one of the cheap ones from AliExpress or something to that effect. But it's a UV nail gel. Now what I'm gonna do is put that over my sentiment and I have some more of these little stars and I want to get a star and put it on that S. I've got my pick up tool and pop it in there but I think I'll put a couple more on, why not? Oops, did one more on there. another one there. Okay. Now the advantage of this stuff being is that it is UV cured, I can just bring in a lamp and I can cure it within 60 seconds and I do not have to worry about it being wet and having to dry it off overnight or anything like that. And I don't have to worry about heating up my very thin card with the heat tool. So I'm going to come back when that's finished. So this has had a minute to cure under the lamp and I'm going to get a little drop of alcohol. If, you, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, the gel that I've got has a slight tacky layer on it. And obviously I don't want this to be tacky. So just wiping it off with a tiny amount of alcohol. So I've got some double-sided foam tape here, which I've put on the back. And I'm going to mount this pretty much in the center at the top. And it almost looks like I've put a plastic sentiment strip on here, which is 
pretty cool really. So there we go, let it snow. That is the first of the cards finished. I have a different idea here for doing your sentiments. Now I've got some foam stuff uh, here. It's a air dry foam clay. I've got it in this bag because I opened the other bag that it came in and I've used quite a lot of it. So I've just got the remainder in here. It's very cheap to buy. It's made for children to play with. So it's designed for like three year olds. <clears throat> and I got some because I was curious about it. I said, it feels like marshmallow when you open it up. You'd think looking at it because it's quite sort of gooey and it stretches a lot when you take it out of the bag. You'd think that it was actually very sticky, but it isn't. It's very easy to manipulate. It doesn't take that long to dry and it never dries really, really hard. It dries to like a firm foam, a bit like a sponge ball. And I've done it in three different ways here. This one here, I just took a stamp and I pressed it into some rolled out clay and I just left it as is. So you have the Merry Christmas. With this one, I rolled it a little thinner, as you can see. And I actually put my stamp onto my ink pad, my Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad before pressing it into the foam. So you get the dark lettering on it. And with this one, I brushed the foam with some powdered colors, some um, shiny powdered colors. Now you don't have to have specialist items for this. You can use eyeshadow palettes, cheap eyeshadow palettes, and that will work just as well. And again, I did tap my stamp onto a black ink pad and then I stamped it into the foam. So this is the one that I used for that. So as you can see, it's got some green powder on it and all I need to do is wash that off underneath the dat. Leave them to dry and then you can use them as normal. I just think it's another way of adding a little bit of dimension. That stuff would also be really good if you were doing window frame cards or if you had to do a signpost on a card, you could add the dimension to the signpost, so it would be really good. And it's non-toxic, it's very, very light, fun to use, and it's just another thing to put in your arsenal of craft supplies, really. So there we go, another way of doing your sentiments. So this is the card that I completed, which was made with the photographic paper. As you can see, it's glossy. I've added my sentiment and I've added the little stars and I've added some little snowflakes that I had in my stash. So basically there is only the one cut in there and that is the snowflake at the very bottom. And I think that looks very pretty. I'm quite happy with the way that it's turned out. And this is the one that I made on the normal card with the silver card inlay, some more of the stars, and then the sentiment, which is finished off with nail gel. Okay, so slightly different methods to what you might be used to perhaps, but two ideas for doing sentiments in a slightly different way. And I will link the file below that will give you the snowflakes that I designed. If you're into making polymer stamps, you can make them as stamps as I have done. I haven't used them in this, but I have made them as stamps. But if not, you can just use them as cut files and resize them to suit whatever project you're doing. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.